All right, good day and welcome. Employment Law Show, as you saw by the fancy graphic at the beginning. Good to have you along for the next 30 minutes. John Scholes here beside me, Lior Samfiru. Lior is a co-founding partner, Samfiru Tamarkin LLP, the most positively reviewed law firm across this country. You can check that out, whether you're in Ontario or BC or Alberta, practicing all over and everybody tuning in. The radio show, by the way, we're going to get to some phone calls in just a bit from our long-running radio show. Lior and I and the other lawyers have been doing that for well over a decade, and it can be found at employmentlawyer.ca. There's a media tab there, and you'll find a station near you. But phone call, reaching out any time to Lior and his team, one 855 821-5900 for a chat, email help at employmentlawyer.ca. And we often and always actually refer to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca during this show. There's things to be learned there about employment law, all different aspects of it, things you will not know and will not realize until you educate yourself on that website. And Severance Pay Calculator is there. Over 2 million people, 2 million, have used the Severance Pay Calculator to realize and have their eyes opened as to what real severance should be if you're uh, an employee working in this country. So make sure you go there as well, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And on the show today, Leo, are five mistakes employees should not make. We'll get to that in just a bit, but we always start off with the uh, case of the day or week that was that's happening with you, pal. What's on your desk? Well, John, it's, it's always great to be here. And, you know, when we started this show all these years ago, the idea was to talk about the rights that you didn't even know you had. People didn't even realize that they had. Well, those words are as true today as they were uh, years ago when we started the show. We talk about things that may be obvious, but they're actually not. They're, they could be tricky, and, and you may have these rights that uh, are there for you to take, but if you don't realize that they're there, the law can't help you. So I want to make sure that whoever watches the show is armed with knowledge, okay, is armed with the information that they need to have to make their work life uh, better to ensure that they're not being taken advantage of, that they're being treated properly, that they know how to deal with ultimatums, that they know what they're owed legally. So that's exactly what the point is. And we cover a lot of topics, as I do in my, uh, my non-TV uh, job, which is being a regular employment lawyer. So whether it's severance, being let go, being fired, uh, being mistreated or bullied, discrimination, you name it, we deal with it on the show. And of course, if we talk about something here that, that rings a bell for you or that makes you want to do a follow-up question, we'll give you that contact information so you can reach out to me by phone or email at any time. We have a whole team just dedicated to helping employees. So please don't be bashful and, and make that call as well. But to, to get you an idea of the laws and the rights that you may not even realize are there, let's, uh, let me tell you about a situation that came across my desk. Now, I say a situation, but all of a sudden for the last week, I've received probably three or four calls with exactly this scenario. And it has to do with being put on or being on probation. So I've spoken with a number of individuals over the past week who recently started working within the last two or three months. And unfortunately, things didn't work out for them, and the company decided to let them go. In all these cases, company says to them, well, you're on probation. You've been with us for less than three months. We're going to let you go. And because you're on probation, we don't have to pay you anything. So we're going to shake your hand, wish you all the best, and say goodbye. And I can tell you also that in pretty much every one of these scenarios, the, the people thought that, yeah, that kind of made sense. Yeah, probably I'm not owed anything because I'm still there less than, than three months. Well, lucky for them, they called me. And the reason, lucky for them, is because, no, they're not on probation. Remember, you're only on probation if you signed an employment agreement that specifically puts you on probation. It's not automatic. You're not on probation just because you started a new job. And for you to be let go without any compensation, your employment agreement would actually have to say that you can be let go in the first 90 days without any payment. If it does not say that, if you lose your job in the first 90 days, yeah, you better believe your own severance. Absolutely. In fact, even if you work for a company for 60 days, 90 days, your severance is going to be measured in months, not days, not weeks, but months. You may have worked for two months and could easily be owed two or three or four months of severance. So I want the message here to be clear to everyone. You are not on probation automatically. You're not on probation just because you started another job. For you to be able to be let go without compensation in the first 90 days, your employment agreement has to say so specifically. If you never signed an employment agreement, or if it doesn't say that, you're not on probation. And if you lose your job, yeah, a lot of severance is owed to you. 
Yeah, it's interesting because most people would think, well, I've only been there for three months. What's my severance going to be? You know, a few pennies. They don't realize that it could be that much. And, and then thinking that, why is it? Why is it disproportionately higher for somebody who's been there for only three months, possibly getting four or five months severance? How does that work? Well, the, the reason for that is because we, ha we have to think, what is the purpose of severance? The purpose of severance is not to punish the company for letting you go. It's to help you, the employee, while you're looking for another job. It's to carry you until you find that other job. Well, just because you work for a company for a few months doesn't mean it's going to take you no time to find another job. It's still going to take you a while. And in fact, it may even take you longer to find another job because you're going to have to explain to a new employer why you only lasted a couple of yeah. months with the previous job. So it's because of that that the severance is going to be substantial and disproportionately higher. So bottom line, short service employees, not only do they get severance, that severance is measured in months and it's disproportionately more than long service employees. So, uh, Lior, if I put my employer hat on, I go, oh, okay, Lior, you say three months. Well, I'm going to be a smart guy. I'm going to put all my new employees on six months probation. How about that? Six months. Well, you can try, but it's actually meaningless to do that. And the reason for that is there's the period of time during which you can let someone go without any compensation. That, can, that period cannot be more than 90 days. And, of course, it only is 90 days if the employee signed an agreement that says that. It's not automatic. So anytime you have an employee, a probationary period that says six months, eight months, nine months, for practical reasons, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't do anything because you're still going to have to pay someone severance if you're letting them go. So as, as a practical matter, uh, really, probation cannot be more than 90 days. And again, only if an employment agreement specifically says so. Again, reaching out to Lior, if this is confusing or any matter, uh, 1 855 821 5900, help at employmentlawyer.ca. And I did mention off the top, Lior, employmentlawyer.ca, the place you go to find a radio show across the country where we do that for an hour pretty much, uh, have been for over a decade. So we take a lot of phone calls on the shows. People call in, they want to hear stuff, and they know that sometimes, if they're lucky, we'll play it on this show and talk about it. So our first phone call from the radio show is coming up right here and now. I'm an employer. And I have an employee for 25 years, right. and I wanted to know what would that person be entitled to if I wanted to let the person go. You're letting them go on a without cause basis? They didn't do something awful? Is that right? Correct. So what kind of job? What do they do? Customer service. And approximately, what's the age of this person? 60 years old. So remember, John, we do have an aging population, an aging workforce yep. across the country. So you have a lot of these individuals that are older, may have been with a company for a long period of time that are losing their job. The first thing I will say is an employee cannot be let go because of their age. OK, an employee, mm -hmm. can, whether it's 60, 65, 75, doesn't matter. It's illegal and it's discriminatory to have the age even be a factor in considering whether to let someone go. Illegal can't do that. But giving this employer the benefit of the doubt, uh, he's not picking on this person because of his age, he needs to make a move. This person happens to be 60 years old. So the question then becomes, this 25 year of service employee that's 60 years old, how much severance are they owed? Well, rather than me just tell you, I could do that very easily, I wanna show you so that you can do it yourself if you ever need to. Let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and let's use our severance calculator tool. By the way, anonymous and free, you can do that at home anytime. So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, let's see what our severance calculator tool says this person is owed. So we know that the person has been there for 25 years in a customer service role. He is 60 years old. His employer is wondering how much severance to pay him. Well, you see at the bottom of the screen that this person is owed as much as 24 months pay. Very low end, it would be 18 months, more likely closer to 24 months of severance. So that's potentially could easily be six figures worth of severance, depending on the person's salary. So that's how easy it is, by the way, to use our severance calculator. Whether you lost your job or worried about losing your job, maybe you're just curious and you want to be armed with the information uh, at your fingertips. So again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, our severance calculator tool is right there for you. You know, it's interesting from what we can glean from that phone call, this employer is doing the right thing. They just want to know what they're going to owe this employee. But now that that number gets spit out the bottom of 18 to 24 months, I'm sensing notice of termination before a lot of a lot of money can be spent. That's a lot of money to give an employee, you know, almost two years pay. So that's an option for this employer too, right? 
Absolutely. So we talk about severance often on the show. Well, one of the ways the employer can meet its severance obligation is actually by not paying severance, but by giving the employee the equivalent in notice, advance notice. So if an employee is owed 24 months severance, the employer could say, we're giving you 24 months notice of termination. You're going to continue working for 24 months, and at the end of 24 months, we're going to say goodbye. Now, if the employee gives enough notice, that they don't have to pay severance. But what happens if they don't give enough notice? So let's say this guy that's owed 24 months only gets six months notice. Well, that's fine, but that means that the employer has to make up the difference at the end. In that example, that would be another 18 months pay that the employer is going to have to make up by way of severance. So yes, an employer can give notice, but the question, of course, is did it give enough notice? If not, severance is still owed. There's another route for you. Any time to ask questions for Lior and his team, terminationquestions.com. Terminationquestions.com. We'll get to one before we break. And that would be Mark, uh, first time around, says, I was on a medical leave for a few months due to contracting and recovering from COVID-19. Upon my return, I was fired. A manager implied that my absenteeism was the reason for my termination. Is that allowed? Well, no, it's actually not allowed, and it's not allowed for several reasons. The first reason is the fact that if he's now off for, for a while and, and uh, you know, maybe has a health condition that uh, makes COVID uh, even worse than ever, or maybe he just had the, the, the virus very badly, well, you can't be let go because of a serious medical condition. That could be considered a disability, and you can't be let go because of that. You cannot be let go uh, because you have a disability, a serious medical condition. It becomes a human rights violation. Irrespective of severance, that can happen. The other thing is this, depending on what province he's in, different provinces have implemented job-protected leave if you do get COVID-19. So you may actually have a right to your job automatically and not be able to be let go if, what, if the reason you were gone was because of COVID-19. So any way you slice it, what this employer did is not legal. So obviously they owe severance. We know that. By the way, just because you're off for a while and your employer is upset about that doesn't mean that you don't get severance. Of course you get severance. But beyond this, this person, Mark, he may even be owed human rights damages because he was let go in an improper situation. Same with you at home. You cannot and should not ever be let go because of a medical condition, whether it's COVID-19 or something else. That absolutely could be a human rights violation. You know, on a past show recently, Lior, we covered five mistakes employers should not make. Now we're going to flip it around, do five mistakes employees should not make. And we'll do that after a short break, which we're going to get into right now. And the number to reach out uh, in, the, in the meantime for Lior, 1-855-821-5900. I'll give you that email address again, help at employmentlawyer.ca. We'll continue. This is the Employment Law Show. People think contractors aren't owed severance. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Many contractors are actually employees and are entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the employment lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. How do you force insurance companies to pay long-term disability claims? Insurance companies deny legitimate claims all the time. They're playing the odds. They know that most people are just going to walk away. Your insurer may ignore you. They may even ignore your doctors, but they can't ignore us. We know how insurance companies work. We know their weaknesses. We know how to use the legal process to force them to pay you what you're owed. Go to disabilityrights.ca. Discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think you are only owed two weeks' pay when you lose your job. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. You may be owed much more than two weeks per year. Don't settle for less. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. All right, welcome back. Thank you so much for hanging on. Employment Law Show, Lior Sanfiru, of course, co-founding partner, Sanfiru Tamarkin, LLP. You want to reach out any time, 1-855-821-821. 5,900 help at employmentlawyer.ca. Let's get into these, Lior. Five mistakes employees should never make. First one, agree to major changes of their job, such as a decrease, uh, decrease in hours or pay, stuff like that, right? So it is a huge mistake when your employer changes the terms of your employment and you accept and you continue working as if nothing mm -hmm. had ever happened. So we're talking about obviously changes to pay, uh, demotions, relocations, changes to hours is a huge one. And the reason why that's a mistake is this, by accepting that you've given the company the right to do it again. So maybe your hours were changed uh, you know, by 
changing one of your days out and, and you know giving you a different day. And you may think, okay, well I'm not I'm not crazy about it, but I'm gonna just accept and continue working. Fine. But what you have to understand is that by accepting this, you've given the company the right to do it again. So next time that they change your hours even more and even more substantially, you may not be able to do anything about it. Same, same thing if you've accepted a pay reduction. Next time they reduce your pay, then again, you won't be able to do anything because you let it happen the first time. So what do you do? Well, a couple of things. Number one is you may be able to treat that change now as a constructive dismissal. You may be able to say, no, I'm not accepting it. And if you're going to do it anyway, I'm going to treat it as a termination of my employment uh, and, and require you to pay me severance. The other thing is you may tell your employer, employer, I'm only going to accept this temporarily. I'm going to continue working for a few months. But, but. If you don't change back to the way things were, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna reserve my right to say no. And at that point, you could still say constructive dismissal. But to simply accept something and continue working and not say anything, that is a huge mistake and certainly one that can come back and haunt you later. I guess over the last two years, that big change, which people haven't haven't known about, is the temporary layoff, right? Again, because of COVID-19. That is a massive change. In fact, I don't know that it gets any bigger than that. Uh, that change being that instead of working, you're now not going to work right. and not going to get paid. An employer does not have a right to put you on a temporary layoff. Well, it doesn't matter what uh, province you're in, Ontario, BC, Alberta. If they do, that's a constructive dismissal in most cases. So you don't have to accept that. And by accepting it, Number one, you're stuck at home. Who, know, who knows where, when you're going to get called back to work? But then you've given them the right to do it again, something that they did not have a right to do by accepting it. Now they can do it again and again. So definitely something you have to keep in mind. Okay, all you employees out there, mistake number two, you should not be making except a bad performance review and inaccurate criticism. So if you've gotten a negative performance review, if you've gotten put on a, on a work improvement plan, uh, if you don't believe that that's fair, if you don't believe that that's accurate, you can't accept it. And what I mean by accepting is you just continue working and don't say anything about it. The problem with accepting it, the reason why it's a mistake is by accepting it, the company can then use it against you. Later on, if you do something wrong, they can say, ah, remember when you accepted you did something wrong before. Now we have both of those things against you. We can, we can just fire you and not pay you anything now. It's going to be used against you. So if you don't agree with the bad performance uh, review, if you don't agree with the performance improvement plan, say so and say so in writing. Send an email to your employer saying, here's why I disagree with it. Here's, here's what you got wrong or here's the facts as they are and tell your employer that. By doing that, you're gonna make it that much harder for the company to use it against you. It could be a simple email, that's all you need. Be respectful, don't ever be rude about it, but just accepting a bad performance plan when, or a performance review when it's not justified, definitely a mistake you don't wanna make. I guess when you, when you write a, you know, the fact that you don't agree with it, you're kind of future-proofing yourself because in a lot of cases when it comes to performance improvement plan or criticism, it's almost like that employer is starting to build up a case possibly to let you go down the line, right? It is exactly what it is. It's a step in the process towards letting you go. So you, while you can't stop your employer from letting you go, you absolutely can stop their, their ability to say, that they can let you go without compensation, i.e. Right. for cause. And the best way you can prevent the termination for cause is to make sure you don't accept a negative review or, or, or anything negative unless it's justified. If it's not justified, say so, and don't just accept it as if nothing happened. Okay, fact number three for employees, what you should not do is sign a new employment contract without the cancel of an employment lawyer, ever. Probably the, the, the most surefire way to give up your rights is to sign them away in an employment agreement. And that is what an employment agreement does. It takes away rights that you would have automatically and it gives them away. It eliminates them. So you have rights, but you also have the right to give your employment rights away. And you may not realize that you're doing that, but if you sign an employment agreement, you may be doing that exactly. For example, you could, be, you could be giving up your right to your full severance in an employment agreement. You could be giving the company the right to lay you off temporarily, to change your job. You may be creating an obligation on yourself not to work for a competitor. That and many other things. So bottom line is if you're starting a new job or if you're already working and you're asked to sign a new employment agreement before you sign, let me see it. Okay, let's talk about what it does, what it means, and how would, how would it negotiate those terms? 
given what I've seen over the last 20 years, it's actually easy to negotiate these terms. A lot of employees think, well, what's the point? I can't negotiate. Sure you can. We need to talk about how to do it right, but it's a huge mistake to just sign an employment agreement without realizing and knowing what you could be giving up. All right, mistake number four, employees should never make, and that is relying on a friend, family member, someone else who lost their job, or the internet when it comes to your employment law rights. You know, it's when it comes to your, your, your health, your physical health, you should get advice from a doctor. You shouldn't just try to figure out right. from your Uncle Bob what you should be worried about, uh, you know, your condition. Well, the same thing with employment law and your workplace rights. It's important enough that you can't leave it to chance. You can't ask your Uncle Bob because he used to own a company or he used to work in HR. You can't go to Google and hope that you'll find the right answer because what happens if you don't? You know, there's no second shot. There's no excuses not understanding your rights. So it's a huge mistake and it's a huge common way employees uh, lose their rights by getting information and advice from the wrong sources. So I know it sounds self-serving when I say call me, which is why I always say, that's fine. If you don't like me, if you don't think that I know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Talk to another employment lawyer, but get your information, get your answers and your rights from the right source. Definitely have to do that always. And mistake number five kind of bleeds off of number four, and that is signing that severance offer initially without seeking legal advice, just doing this and walking away from it. Never good. Literally the most costly mistake that you can make. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason for that, 90% of severance offers, even with big companies, are inadequate. It's rare. It's rare for me to see a severance offer that's good. And I do this for a living, okay? Chances are, if you've been let go, even if you're, you're working for a great employer, a big employer, an uh, um, employer that you have a good relationship with, chances are whatever you've been offered is less than what you're owed. And the mistake that employees make is they don't get advice. They don't understand what they're owed. They take their employer, uh, employer's word for it, and they sign off on that letter. The problem is once you sign off, there's no taking it back. Even if you feel pressure, I know that there's a deadline. Remember, that deadline is meaningless. You don't lose your rights Friday at 5. So do the right thing, the smart thing. Get advice. Call me if you lose your job. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca instead if you want. Use our severance calculator tool. But please don't make the mistake of signing that severance offer before you do that. Reaching out as we uh, get into another phone call here in a moment is 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca. And as Lior said, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There is no reason left to remain in the dark when it comes to your employment law rights. Uh, radio show, again, employmentlawyer.ca to find a station across the country. Lior, phone call number two from one of our radio shows is coming up right now. I had a job for two years. After three months, we were supposed to get medical, dental. I didn't get it at all in the whole two years I was there. And then they ended up firing me during COVID after I fell down the stairs and injured myself. Uh, well, you know, th there's potentially breach of, of contract here. If, if she was supposed to get benefits, there's potentially human rights violations uh, here. If she's let go because of an injury or a medical condition. So there's a lot to, to, to dissect here, probably more than I can do, you know, uh, just be talking on TV. But bottom line is this, your employer, if you have an employment agreement with that employer that says you're going to get benefits, you're going to get a pay raise, a bonus, your employer can't just not give those to you, of course, because you have an agreement in place. They're obliged to abide by it. Uh, your employer can't change their mind just because. So that's important to remember. And of course, if you do have a medical condition, uh, it could be COVID-19, it could be a car accident, it could be uh, a genetic condition, maybe it's a mental health issue. Okay? You cannot be punished, let go, mistreated, disciplined because of it. If that happens, that's a human rights violation. you got to get on the phone and call me right away. The law does not take kindly to those situations. All right, I want to grab another phone call, Lior, from the radio show, but we got to slide into a quick break first, so we'll do that and come back and, uh, and continue on. 1-855-821-5900 is the number to reach Lior's crew. Email is help at employmentlawyer.ca as well. We'll continue. This is the Employment Law Show. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. 
If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in and staying with us. We'll get into our last few minutes of the show here, Lior. Get back to another phone call from our radio show. I've got a salary and commission job. I work remotely from home. I'm supposed to be paid a quarterly per commission. That was due recently, and I just had a meeting with them, and they told me that I need to sign a new contract that retroactively changes my plan from the beginning of the year, where I'm only paid commission at the end of the year. Run, run yeah. fast and far away. Run fast or, or at a minimum say no, uh, absolutely not. I remember this call on our radio show, John, and yep. absolutely what I said then is what I'm going to say. Now, your employer can't do that. The terms of your employment are the terms of your employment. And why would you agree to, to change that, to reduce your commission or to, to have your commission delayed? That's an essential part of your, of your terms of employment. So what I would tell them is to say, no, I'm not doing that. I expect you to pay me what you owe me as we've agreed. One of two things will happen here, or potentially one of three things. Number one, the employer may just back off. Okay, if the employer backs off, uh, then that's great. That, that's the best scenario. The other thing is the employer may decide to do it anyway. So you didn't sign, but we're going to implement that change anyway. Well, that's a constructive dismissal if they do that. They can't do that, and you can still pursue that. Or the employer may say, well, if you didn't sign, we're going to let you go. But again, severance would have to be paid. And I think that's better than signing a, a term that changes your compensation in a way that it's completely unfair. So just say no in that situation. Absolutely. Can the employee, if they want to, figure out oh, maybe this won't be that bad, maybe it'll be better if I work hard? I don't know. Can they take it out for a bit of a spin and then say and still say no if it doesn't work out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would tell the employer in that situation, I'm going to accept this, but only for the next cycle of commissions and, and see how that right. works. And I reserve, reserve my right to say, no, I'm not going to do that long term. You have to say that. You have to say that in writing, of course. But frankly, in a situation like this where it's obvious what the employer is doing, I think the best advice is just say no. Terminationquestions.com. Lior, I'll get this one in quickly before we wrap for the day. This one from Francis says, I lost my job as a senior warehouse supervisor for a big company after 20 years in the role. They offered me two weeks per year of service and severance. Is this amount of compensation normal after so many years with the same employer? Well, hopefully our regular viewers know that it's wrong. So she's owed much more than that. So let's actually go there before we end the show. Let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Let's use our severance calculator one more time and see the actual amount that she's owed. And by the way, spoiler alert, before we do that, it's more than two weeks per year. So we know that she's been there for, for 20 years, 55 years of age. She was offered 40 weeks, two weeks per year. A lot of employees may have said, that's fine except it's not. She is owed as much as 24 months pay. 24 months, by the way, is 104 weeks. So that's way more than double what, they, what she's been offered. That's the right amount. That's what she's owed. And by the way, you at home, the same thing. You can grab your smartphone, your tablet, your desktop, go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, use our severance calculator. Always, John, the very first place you go to if you even think that you're going to lose your job, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Two weeks to two years. That's like unbelievable. That's like the best phone call she's ever made or best write it, best letters she's ever written anyway, right? Absolutely. That's why we're here. So do the same thing. You bet. Phone call, 1-855-821-5900 to reach out to Leo anytime. You want to email, it's help at employmentlawyer.ca. And you can find the severance pay calculator at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Again, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. We'll catch you again next time on the Employment Law Show. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.